A gorgeous sky replacement with the slide of two very simple sliders with blend if. One and two. That's a gorgeous sky replacement in a matter of seconds. There is one thing that my wife says all the time that I can't stand. Yes, only one thing, I promise. And that's when we're driving around and there's not a cloud in the sky and she looks up and she goes, oh, it's such a beautiful day. There's not a cloud in the sky. And I'm like, yeah, maybe for some people, but as a landscape photographer, you want clouds in the sky. For instance, I went to Sedona, had a wonderful trip last week. The problem, the whole week, not a single cloud, not one, not one cloud to be seen in the sky. It was devastating because I went to some gorgeous locations and I really wanted to have just something in the sky to paint that blank blue emptiness. Well, thankfully there's Photoshop. We can replace skies in Photoshop very simply, but I want to put one of my techniques to the test and compare it directly to replacing a sky in Photoshop. So the question is, can my method beat the sky replacement tool in Photoshop? Let's find out. So this is the image that I captured in Sedona. This is Cathedral Rock from the Crescent Moon parking area. It's a gorgeous location to photograph, no matter what time of day it is, even with a bright blue sky. It's one of those places that you just can't see it from the photograph that I'm showing you now. You have to experience it. It's one of those types of environments. But what could make this even better is a sky behind it. So typically, one would go up to edit and then go to sky replacement and they would replace this sky. We are going to do that in a second, but the first thing I want to do is show you how I like to replace skies in Photoshop in a magical, very simple way with something called Blend If. So the sky I'm going to use is going to be this sky right here. I'm just going to drag and drop this sky onto my image, pressing V for the move tool, and I'll click and drag and I'll press and hold shift as I do that. That way it aligns it from the center. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this sky a little bit bigger and put it directly on top of my image just like this. So what exactly is the sky? It's blue. We have these settings here called blend if. And what blend if is, is a series of sliders here that we typically show gray. That's the luminance value. Well, gray is actually the combination of the red, green, and blue channels. So if we want to put this sky onto our image, we have to think about what channel the sky actually is. The channel for the sky, obviously, would be then the blue channel. So in this drop down box, all I'm going to do is click blue. So in order to make this work, we want to make sure that we are applying this sky to the blue that is happening on the image below. So what we want to essentially do is protect the underlying layers colors that are anything but blue. So if we move it this way from this side, that's where blue actually exists. So that didn't work. So what's the opposite? Well, we just go to the other side of the blend if, and as we move this over, it's going to protect anything in the underlying layer that is not blue. So as I move this over, you can see that we are applying this sky exactly to the blue in the background. If I press alt or option, I can click on this and I can feather it over like this, and that will help make it a little bit more of a clean distribution there for our sky. With that being said, we still have some stuff that's happening up here. I'm actually gonna turn on the color overlay so you can see everywhere that this sky is now. This color overlay, anything that's in magenta, is where this sky is now being placed on our image. So yes, it is being placed over top of the blue, but it's also being placed over top of some other colors. Well, let's go into other blend if. Let's go to blend if red. Now, if we don't want this to affect the red, we're gonna to have to go to this side because this side is what controls the red channel. So I'll move this over. And you'll start to see that we are blending in that sky with anything that is red. I'll move it all the way over so you can see where red pixels actually start to get into our sky in the background, which is over there. Because, again, it's based on channels and not actual physical colors. If I press Alt or Option, we get a nice smooth blend as we feather that in. And I'll press OK. Now, I'll turn this color overlay off so we don't see that anymore. We just see the image on our background. The cool part about this is that if I press the V key and move this, I'm going to press an old shift while I do it. I can move this up and you see how the sky just transitions on our image wherever there is blue, avoiding the red as well. So with this, I'm going to turn the color overlay on. If we see that this is happening anywhere else in magenta, anywhere else, I saw a little bit at the bottom of the image. I'm going to put a mask on here, B for my brush tool, and I'm just going to use one of my blending brushes here and bl brush out with the color black to make sure that nothing is there. So that is my sky replacement, very quickly and easily done, 
using Blendif, and it's magical. Now let's compare and contrast that with the actual sky replacement tool in Photoshop. So I'm going to click on my background, go to edit and go to sky replacement. Now the sky that I want to replace this with, I've already preloaded into the sky replacement tool here. And you can see that when we put the sky replacement on there, there's a lot of different adjustments here as far as brightness of that sky, uh, how it might affect the, um, the foreground of our image with our foreground adjustments here, with our lighting adjustments here. We can turn that on, we can turn that off. This can be difficult to find the blend that we need to get here, but these are the controls that we have available to us using this. So I'm just gonna leave this as normal as it was so that you can see my version versus the version that we have here with the sky replacement tool. If I click and drag, I can move this around a little bit. I'm not entirely sure where my sky replacement was, but I think it was something about right here. So we'll press okay. So here is the sky replacement from Photoshop, and here is my sky replacement. Let's see which one is better. So what I'm gonna do is press Control Shift Alt and E to make a stamp of this, call this PS, and then I'm gonna turn that off, turn that off, turn that on, Control Shift Alt E, call this Blake. Now, let's take our Photoshop one and put it on top of our Blake one and turn them on and off. Okay, so other than the sky being placed in a different area on our image, we do have what looks to be a blend that's happening here with our trees. This is the Photoshop sky replacement. This is my sky replacement. Look at the difference. Look at how much better we have the control around the leaves of the tree. Yes, the sky replacement tool in Photoshop is amazing, but look at how it leaves this feathered edge around areas that are um, of higher contrast or leaf areas. So we'll move in over here and again, there's my version, there's the Photoshop version. On this side, it actually looks like it handled it a little bit better, but over here we can see a haloing blue edge around where the Photoshop did the sky replacement. Now, there are more controls in that Photoshop sky replacement, as I said, right? The controls we have are uh, the lighting adjustments that we have for the sky and for the foreground. So in order to get that similar effect where we are applying, instead of sliders to our sky replacement, Let's use an adjustment layer. So I'm going to put an adjustment layer on top of my sky replacement. Let's make it a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to press Alt or Option. So that curve is now clipped into this sky. And all I got to do is brighten this up a little bit. And that looks a little bit more natural, doesn't it? This is a phenomenal way to do a sky replacement using manual tools rather than trying to rely on Photoshop AI to do the sky replacement for you. I'm going to go ahead and add another sky to this and show you this one more time just to make sure you get the principle down. I'm gonna double click on a different sky that I'm gonna put in here. Let's go ahead and move this over to our image. And now I'm going to make the size larger, okay? Just make it big, doesn't really matter at this point. We aren't trying to be perfect. I'm gonna double click in here to get into blend if settings. I'm gonna to go to the blue blend if. What are we trying to do here? We are trying to make sure that the underlying layers, other colors other than blue are protected from this cloud. That's the best way to think about this. We want the underlying layers, other stuff to show through. So if we move from this side, that's not gonna work because we're protecting the blue of the underlying layer. Let's go over to this side and move this over until we get a good, healthy adjustment right about there, okay? Alt or Option to split and feather that over, about like that, and I might move this over just a little bit more. What other color are we trying to protect here? The reds. So let's go into blend if, let's go to red. Now with this, we specifically want to make sure that red doesn't get affected, which is actually on this side of the slider. So if you're looking at these red, green, and blue blend if, and you're not sure which one's the right side, you can either experiment by moving them back and forth, or you can just say to yourself, okay, the one that has the highest brightness of that color or saturation of that color, that's the red slider. The one that's on the opposite, that's actually going to be anything other than the color red, which in the case of color would more than likely be anything that is cyan. So what's closest to cyan? That blue. That's why as we move this over, it gets rid of that in the sky area. So we'll move this over on the other side because that's the red that we want to get rid of, Alt or Option, and we can feather that over. As I said about the color overlay, it's a good idea to put that on there just to ensure that that is not being applied to anywhere else in your photograph. And if it is, all you got to do is put a mask on here, B for your brush tool, and brush away anywhere that you see magenta. 
And sometimes it can be really helpful to see it like this while you're working. So we brush away anywhere that, that's magenta where that sky is being affected. Okay, now if we turn the color overlay off, we're good to go. If we want to move that sky with a mask applied to it, unclick the link here. And then when we have the layer here selected, not the mask, but the layer selected, V for the move tool, press and hold shift so it stays aligned while you move it up. We can move that sky exactly where we want it to go. And we've got a beautiful sky replacement that looks extremely natural. If we want to apply an adjustment layer to this, just put an adjustment layer right on top, Alt or Option, to clip it into that layer, and then an increase in brightness, and bam. We've got a beautiful blue sky that could actually work for this image. The point of this video was not to show you that Photoshop's sky replacement is not a good tool. That's not what the point of this tutorial. There are times when that sky replacement tool is phenomenal, and with one click, you can have a sky replaced. This tutorial is to show you that sometimes when that doesn't work, there's another tool that you have in your tool belt that can help you make a better sky replacement very quickly, very easily with just the slide of a slider in Blendif. In my personal opinion, Blendif is the most powerful tool ever invented in Photoshop, and you know how long it's been there? much longer than the sky replacement tool. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take very difficult things in Photoshop like this and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.